Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 9 of the chapter Periodic Classification of Elements. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the S-block elements. The S-block elements are those elements which belong to group 1 and group 2 of the periodic table. The group 1 elements are also called the alkali metals and the group 2 metals are elements are also called the alkaline earth metals. As you hear, these are predominantly metals and that's why we call them alkali metals and alkaline earth metals because these are the metals which are found in the earth so they were called the alkaline earth metals. The elements that belong to the first group that is the alkali metals they have one electron in their outermost s orbital. For example, hydrogen, the configuration of hydrogen is 1s1, although it's not a metal. And it is in the last or the latest periodic table, hydrogen has not been placed here. It has been kept separate here because of its dissimilarities with the other elements in the alkali metals. Lithium has a configuration of 2s1, sodium 3s1, Potassium is 4s1, rubidium 5s1, cesium 6s1 and francium 7s1. So we find that in the first group all elements have one general electronic configuration which can be written as ns1 where n stands for the shell so the, or the principal quantum number. So 1s1, 2s1, 3s1, 4s1 could be written as ns1. Similarly, for the alkaline earth metals, the general electronic configuration is written as ns2. It means these are elements which have two electrons in the outermost s orbital, where n stands for the principal quantum number, s is the orbital and there are two electrons in the s orbital. So beryllium has a configuration of 2s2, magnesium is 3s2, calcium 4s2, strontium 5s2, barium 6s2 and radium 7s2. You would expect helium to be here because helium has a configuration of 1s2. But since helium has properties which are not at all similar to the alkaline earth metals, rather it has properties similar to the noble gases, therefore due to its similarity to their nature, it has been placed here. But we'll study about the details about it later. So these were the first two groups, that is the alkali and the alkaline earth metals and they form the S block. Why the S block? Because in these groups it is the S orbitals which are being filled up. Now if you talk of the reactivity, these elements, they are highly reactive and they are metals. In the previous video, I told you about this magical octet, the magical number of eight, that all elements, uh, if have an outer the outermost shell of any element can never have more than eight electrons and I also told you that all elements try to acquire this octet and in order to acquire this octet they react all chemical reactions take place in order to acquire that octet so elements can acquire that octet either by losing electrons or by gaining electrons or by sharing electrons. There are only three ways how they can acquire the octet. If they have just, remember, losing or gaining electrons requires energy. It is like having a magnet and a nail attached to it. If you have to remove a nail which is attached to a magnet, you have to use energy to pull it off, of the magnetic field, of the attraction being experienced by the magnet. I would always want you to imagine the nucleus to be that magnet and the electrons to be those pieces of nails. So if you have to pull it out, if you have to pull out one electron, that is one nail away from the nucleus, you will have to use some energy. But now whatever magnetism is there, it is now focused on the other nails. Therefore those nails experience the attraction even more strongly. You see? The magnet wants to keep the nails to itself. So when you remove the second electron, you have to use even more energy. And if you have to use a, remove a third nail or a third electron from a nucleus, you have to use a very large amount of energy. But if you have to remove four electrons from an atom to acquire the octet, it's almost impossible. 
the energy required to remove the fourth nail from that magnet would be almost impossible. The magnet is going to say, no way, I'm not getting rid of, the, of another nail. This is mine. Do what you want to do. You cannot take any more from me. So, removing electrons or putting in electrons. There is a magnet and it has a certain energy. It already has nails all around it. And you're trying to push more nails into it. It does not have, it already is using all its energy for whatever nails it has. Of course, it's a magnet. It will always attract a nail that comes to it. But the attraction won't be as strong. So if you want to add more nails, you have to push the nails into the magnetic field. So pushing one nail, easy. Two nails, difficult. Three nails, very difficult. Four nails, impossible. So gaining or removing, removing or adding electrons to an atom. Removing or adding one electron is easy. Two is difficult. Three is very, very difficult. And four is almost impossible. Another thing that I would like to tell you before we discuss the properties of these S block elements is that any element that loses electrons in chemical reactions to acquire the octet is a metal. Metals are the kings of the elements, the kingdom of elements. Metals are the kings. They are the ones that donate electrons. Okay, you have less electrons, there you go. Take it from me. So the kings, they donate. Metals are the kings in the element kingdom or the element dumb. And they release electrons. And the ease with which they lose electrons shows how reactive that metal is. So we call them the alkali and the alkaline earth metals are reactive metals. Why are they reactive? Because they lose their, they have to lose only one now. If lithium loses one electron, let us, uh, lithium loses one electron, it will acquire the configuration of helium. And helium has the outermost shell, which is the first shell, complete. Although it does not follow the octet rule being the first shell, it completes only the duplet. But it has completed the first shell, which is more stable. Therefore, lithium would like to lose that one electron quickly so that it acquires the stable noble gas configuration. All noble gases have eight electrons in their outermost shell. And that is why they are the most stable and they never react. They never react because they don't have to. They already have acquired their octet and in the case of helium, it's the duplet. But why would they react? Because it is the octet because of which all the elements are running towards. So sodium loses one electron to acquire the configuration of neon and uh, potassium loses one electron to acquire the configuration of argon. So in order to acquire the octet, the alkali metals have to lose only one electron and the alkaline earth metals have to lose two electrons. So losing one, electrons, very e one electron is very easy. Losing two electrons, a little difficult but still easy. So they form metals and they are highly reactive. But we also find that they have low ionization energies or enthalpies. Ionization enthalpy, when you remove an electron from an atom, the number of protons remains the same, but the number of electrons becomes less. So they form ions. Ions are charged atoms. Atoms from which electrons have either been removed or they've been added. If they've been removed, the atom becomes positively charged because it has those many extra protons. And if you add electrons, it becomes negatively charged because of the added negative charge of the electrons. So they have low ionization energy. When will they have, remember the nail, easily you're pulling it out. It has low, you're using less energy. So they have low ionization energy. They can easily lose the electrons. So that energy required to pull out the electrons is less. So they have low ionization energies and they form one positive or two positive ions because they lose one electron and two electrons each. But as we go down the group, we find that the shell is increasing. And as the shell principal quantum number becomes larger, the size of the shell becomes larger. So now the electron which is in the first, uh, in the second shell, and if you imagine an electron in the seventh shell, 
electron in the second shell is so close to the magnet or the nucleus but electron in the seventh shell is so far away so tell me which one would be easier to remove from the atom it would be easier to remove an electron which is already further away from the nucleus so this ionization energy as you go down these groups it decreases you need lesser and lesser energy to kick out that one electron or two electrons so as ionization energy decreases which means the ease of removing electrons increases the the reactivity of these metals increases the easier it is to lose electrons the more reactive would be the metal and due to this high reactivity of the alkali and the alkaline earth metals, they are never found free in nature. They are never found in their native state like gold, like these noble gases. You will not find them reacted or in the compound form. You always find them which are in, in the compound form. They are combined with other elements. And the compounds that they make will be predominantly ionic. Ionic compounds are compounds which are formed where one there are two ions that is one part one atom loses electrons and another atom or group of atoms gains those electrons and then the two become positively and negatively charged and stay together because of the electrostatic forces of attraction. We'll do that in details later. So they predominantly form these ionic compounds because when they lose electrons, they form ions. So the compounds they form would be ionic in nature. Except for lithium and beryllium. Beryllium and lithium try to form covalent compounds. Covalent compounds are compounds formed by sharing of electrons. They have a more covalent character in them. The reason is the same that the in in comparison to the rest of the elements, their ionization enthalpy is the highest. It is most difficult to remove the electron from these two elements. Out of these, we are comparing them only with the rest of the elements here. So out of these, they are least ionic in nature. So these were the S block elements.